All right, folks. So um, here we're on the final stretch. I've turned the last corner, and I'm making a beeline to the finish line. So um, get you right back to where we are. Um, I've completed the threading. It worked out nicely. And the keyway's done. The, uh, the journal's done. I even put that little uh, slot in there. Uh, that turned out okay. Uh, video didn't sure turn out all that great, so I didn't add it to anything. But, uh, so that's the depth. Um, the only thing on, of course, and this blind's in there, and it's it fits positionally, but hey, who cares? Uh, so now, last step, I need to cut the sheave portion. Now, this belt is a 4L, if memory serves. Um, can't tell you the length off the top of my head. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to uh, embrace religion <laughs> somewhat. And uh, I'm going to put this aside. And I dug out my Bible. And here we go. It, it took a little leaf through the pages, but I, I found the, uh, the page for the light duty V belts. And here is my 4L. Now, um, this is actually the first time I've even, well, I'm not turned a page, but first time I've referenced this. And so what I'm looking at here is uh, this block. And the, uh, the minimum recommended diameter, effective outside diameter, is two and a half inches. Uh, all dimensions are in dimensions. So um, that's my minimum. Uh, I'm actually just a hair over two on the outside. So anyway, uh, so I come down over here, less than 2.65 inches. And my angle, which is the part that I was really concerned about, my groove angle, Okay, and I believe that's uh, plus or minus 20 minutes, um, is 30 degrees. The groove angle is right up here. So this angle right here is 30 degrees. Now, uh, I've, uh, I cheated a little bit, and I, uh, I measured this, <laughs> because it's just kind of the way I like to do things. So um, uh, the valley, or whatever you call it, I didn't see a designation for it, but um, that is quarter of an inch. Okay, the top side is half an inch, and I'm gonna do a little trig, and I'm gonna find out that angle. Um, I bet you it's really close to 30, but uh, anyway. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna compare it to the book. Uh, I'll be back in a heartbeat, and uh, I don't think there's anything else I need to pay attention to here. No, not really. All I'm really concerned about is this angle. Make sure I get that angle right, and that uh, I get the correct depth. So I need the correct depth, uh, the correct angle, and everything else should fall into place. So uh, I'm going to get a notepad and do a little bit of math. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back again. Um, I did a little measuring, a little figuring, and nothing makes sense. <laughs> All right, so uh, bear with me. So the book says that a 4L, okay, with less than an effective outer diameter of 2.65 uh, inches, which is what mine is, has a groove of 30 degrees plus or minus 20 minutes. I'm pretty sure I'm reading that right. Anyway, what it also says is that it should have a BG of 0.49, or 490 thou. BG is the outer mouth. Okay, and also says that I should have an HG of the same value, 490. HG is the height, so from the root to the tip, whatever the hell you call it. So it's symmetrical. It's it's square. Those two dimensions are square to one another. Both are 490 thou. Well, <laughs> in the real world. Uh, my root is just shy of quarter inch, let's say quarter, right? They don't give you a value for that over here, but it doesn't really make a difference. Um, the mouth, whatever, I don't have a better term for it, is a half inch. The height, and here's the glaring difference, because keep in mind that's supposed to be uh, 490 thou, so only 10 thou off. You attribute that to wear or bad measurement. This value, my height, I've got 316, say, 9 thou. Now, I measured this a half dozen times, and that number did not change. 
So there's my glaring difference. Um, I grabbed a, a 4L belt, and it sits pretty high in there, but I know it takes a 4L, and uh, barring the, the part not being original and somebody doing what I did, being haphazard with the, with the sheave, um, it's the OEM part. So now, here's the funny part. So the book says, uh, where are we? The book says 30, 30 degrees. My math tells me 18, 18.3 decimal. Uh, and I, I think I screwed something up here and I did it again and I made that value even smaller. So I'm nowhere near. Huh. Well, yay, what am I gonna do? So what I did do is uh, chuck the, the, uh, the original part up in the lathe and I'm just gonna indicate it. I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Let's put it back in one second. All right, we're back. So now, I've got this all jigged up in the uh, in the lathe here, and so here's my original part. Okay, I've got my compound set to the 30 degrees, so 90, 30 degrees off, 90, and uh, I rigged up an indicator. Now nothing's completely square or level, you know. Uh, I don't I don't have the right tools to do this properly, but anyway. So what I've done is I've uh, I've got the best angle I can. Which is going to throw my numbers off a little bit. Uh, the trig isn't going to push the plunger, you know, effectively, but it's going to get me close enough for checking. And so now I, I've touched off. I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm right, right there, as close as I can manage. And uh, I'm going to back this up. So what's going to happen is I'm going to follow this angle with the compound set at 30. Now, for those who haven't done this before. I'm going to try to find a good angle here so you can see the dial. It's a massive glare. It's not too bad. Anyways, those who haven't done this before, it's a great way for checking uh, tapers or setting up your uh, your compound for uh, tapers and whatnot. You know, rather than doing the math, you just uh, you take a known part with a known taper that's you know correct, chuck it up, and you use a dial and you just run back and forth on it several times, adjusting your compound angle until you fall in because the number like I did this for a Morse taper number two and uh, the numbers were just wacky like it was uh, 12 degrees something minutes a couple seconds ah, I couldn't set that up it was well beyond me so what I did was is I I used the dial indicator in the compound and I just I just chased the part and adjusting the compound on the fly until I got zero run out golden clamped it down made my uh, my tapers and I was done Easily the best way of doing it. But anyway, so I'm going to follow the same premise here. So I've, I've got it touched off. It, it's it's touching, and I'm just going to run it up with the compound. And if I'm 30 degrees, then my dial shouldn't move. Now, obviously, I've done this already. So I'm going to back this off and watch her take off. Look where to go. Let's see if I can get this. Yeah, I'm not yeah, getting close to the mouth. Yeah, I mean, you get the point. I mean, there's 50 thou. And I haven't even gone half inch. So obviously something's wrong there. So now what's happening is um, I'm gaining. Right? I'm gaining a number. So I'm going to go back down. Actually, I'm probably not going to make my point to do that now. But uh, so I'm gaining. As, I, as I'm moving away, or as I should be, you know, <laughs> my, my, what I'm getting at is it's my angle on my compounds pushing me in to the sheep wall or the sheep angle. So I need to come away. I, I need to kick it this way. So my, my number is going to be less than 30. Let me back up here a little bit. So here I am at 30. And as I'm pulling back this way, I'm getting harder into the, the side angle of my sheave. So I need to come this way, lessen my angle. To, co to compensate for that. Now, this stands to reason with my math. Like I said, my math was about an 18. The book says 30. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, and I just got this lightly tightened up. I'm going to, uh, here are we here. I'm at 30. Uh, for giggles, I'm going to go down to 20. Mm, close enough. Well, not quite. So now this should, I probably don't even need to tighten that. I'm just going to here we go. So now, ooh, I hope I got enough travel here. Bear with me for a second. Yeah. OK. 
Okay, uh, this is going to be difficult with one hand. I'm going to have to do this. Uh, do this. Now, what I'm doing is I'm repositioning my, uh, my dial, and I'm not quite touching it. So uh, now that I'm inside, I'm going to back up just a little bit. Oh, good, you can see that. Try, there's the gap. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to back up just some at the mouth. And then I'm going to bring the whole carriage forward, touch in. And there we go. And then without paying too much attention, I'm going to run back in. And... Uh, there we go. I'm trying not to... Trying not to hit here. So I'm going to move it back in. I'm going to load up my dial a little bit more. And then I'm going to run back in again. It's right about there. Uh, this really doesn't make a difference. I'm going to zero my dial. All right. Take two. So now we're at 20. My mass at 18. If I'm right, we're going to get it. It's going to happen again, but to a greater lesser extent. I have no idea what the math might be. Let's try this again. See what happens. So I'm backing up. It's moving ever so slightly. And there we go. I'm right at the tip. So that was all of what? Wow, that's a dirty dial. Sorry, guys. Um, less than 5,000? Yep, four and a half. Wow. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to uh, make some adjustments here. Because this is just pointless if you can't see anything. Uh, okay. So I'm going to dial this in. This in here. This in here. There we go. All right. So now you can actually see what's going on. I'm not going to put the zero. I'll put it on the 70, though. Oh, I lost it a bit. There. Bear with me. All right. So you, you might not be able to read that, but at least you can see what's going on. You can see the divisions. So same thing. I'm going to back this up. Watch my needle. And there you go. So, five thou. I'm off by thou. Five thou. Five thou. Sorry. So let's see if we can get that a little bit better. Again, my mass said I'm just a hair over eight or eighteen. Sorry, eighteen degrees. So I'm gonna come back over here. I'm just gonna kick her in. That glare is horrible. Let's see if we can get up in here. Uh, you can't see. Yeah, close enough. Anyways, I'm gonna bump this in. Just shy. Yeah, so you can see that or not? I'm just shy of 18 degrees there. So now, same thing. Uh, inconsequential tightening of the compound. And looky do, we're off again. So back up. Run in. Uh, I'm going to run it all the way. Get this in a little bit more. I want to load up my dial. And... Yep, just off. Okay. Same thing. Oh, okay. We've lost my dial a little bit here, so I'm going to... Make some adjustments. Get you back over to a good viewing angle. Alright, so now we're back. Ooh, there we go. Alright, so I'm going to put it on the 80. Just for sake of, it's arbitrary, it doesn't matter. Now I'm going to back up, follow the same thing. Now we're uh, just just over 18 degrees, which is what my math said I should be at. Wow, how good is that? I don't know if you got the whole thing in that shot or not. Let me do that again. So I'm going to run back in. And there we go. Where are we at? Hooks back in. Beautiful. Okay, we're right on top of the 80. I'm going to back up. Nothing. And just so you know, it's no trickery. I'm going to keep going until I get outside of the mouth. And you see that needle jump. There it goes. And... Bloop. How's that grab you? Math prevails. Measurements prevail. Book says I need 30 degrees. 
My original part is a hair over 18, just like my number said. I'm going to follow the original part. Um, I don't see any reason to deviate from it. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get to actually uh, cutting the sheave this tonight anyway, so what I'm probably going to do is concentrate on grinding my tool for it. And uh, that'll give me an opportunity to uh, to measure the, uh, the other uh, sheaves on the step point and see where we're at. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we've got some consistency here. If it deviates what somewhat, then I, I might consider uh, following what the book says. And uh, it, it well, if the book matches up to the rest of the step pulley, then that's what I'll do. If not, I'm going to match this part. Uh, I've gone verbatim for everything else, so I don't see any reason to deviate now. Um, odds are I might not even use this step. Uh, the big problem is the bearings. I really couldn't care less about this. I'm going to hook a BFD up to it anyway. Uh, I'm just cutting it in for sake of having it there. Anyways, guys, there you go. I hope that uh, you enjoyed that. Uh, first time I actually put something educational in the video. I'm kind of excited. <laughs> hope you enjoyed. Talk to you soon. Okay, well... Uh, Another day, another dollar. Uh, unfortunately, um, yesterday, um, both the battery on my phone and my point and shoot died, so uh, I had to stop. Uh, obviously, I had to stop filming. I took a couple stills before the battery completely died on the phone, but uh, the work pro progressed because, well, yeah, I want to get things done. So, anyways, uh, here we go. Um, focusing on that any better or not? Anyways, so there it is. Uh, I just um, what did I end up doing? Uh, I had to whittle away at it. My attempt to cut a, a high-speed steel blank as a form tool kind of bombed. Uh, I cut this this edge fine, but um, I just couldn't get the angles right, and uh, I, I, this part I struggled with. So basically, what I did is I, I came in and I like I cut this, took it over, cut over, la 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 la, and I, I whittled away at this side, and then I just moved my tool. And I was hoping to kind of just go in, shoot over, come out, you know. Like you would through threading. That didn't pan out. But, uh, so anyways, I got that all cleaned up, and I had these two angles nice. But unfortunately, I, uh, I blew the tip out on my tool. I think my height, my height, cutting height was too high. But anyways, uh, I blew my tip out. So this morning, or sorry, this afternoon, so let's zoom in a little bit here without getting too distorted. There we go. So that's a carbide tip tool. And uh, I just put a, a, a lesser angle than the 18 degrees just so I could get in there. And I, I cleaned up the bottom of the... Uh, can't really focus in on it. Sorry, guys. But uh, I cleaned up the bottom of the uh, of the sheave. So everything's the dimension. Uh, it's not within thousands of an inch, but again, it doesn't really need to be. It's just holding a belt in place. If anything, it might be a hair bigger, which is good, because now I get to uh, have a little bit more engagement and use the belt, belt a little bit better. But everything's good. I got a six, 30, uh, six, or, uh, sorry, 62 and a half down. I've got 1 16th on either side on the shoulder. Um, my angle's correct, um, my valley's the right width, everything's there. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to break some edges, break some uh, semi-sharp edges, and clean things up, give her a little sand, give her a little polish, and uh, I think I might revisit the keyway um, right there. Uh, for those who are following along, I cut it a little shallow. Uh, I might try seeing if I can uh, get that back up in the mill. Get it a little bit deeper. It's not the end of the world if I don't. Um, we'll see. Uh, I haven't gotten that far. Once I clean all this stuff up, and I got some tooling marks in here from the uh, from the uh, spline cutting process. So, uh, anyways, that's where it's at. It's uh, I think officially done. If I wanted to, I could throw it in the machine, just uh, grind down a key a little bit, and I'd be golden. So now I'm just uh, farting with stuff that I don't really need to. You know how that goes. So anyways, thanks for following along, guys. Uh, I'm going to clean it up, take it out, and I'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison. All right, see you soon.